Echo Bay, Navajo 669, Charlie Whiskey, we're 15 to the southeast here, inbound for Palm Pass for a position report. Morning, Katam, this is Ken down at Cove Bay in 735, Hotel Bravo with the flight plan. Go ahead, sir. Give us uh, four hours en route. We've got four and a half hours on the fuel. Two souls aboard. Sky condition broken, 2,500. Overcast, 3,200. Eisenbeck. It's a national wildlife refuge in western Alaska that few people even know exists. Over two-thirds of its area is designated wilderness, the highest level of federal land protection in the United States. For years, I had been hearing about pressure to build a road through the Eisenbeck Wilderness to connect two communities, and I learned that a survey had been conducted to mark the proposed route. Little visual documentation exists of Eisenbeck, so I came here to photograph and discover for myself what inspired the protection of this little-known place. Stepping foot into a wilderness is a humbling experience, especially when the best way to travel is to follow an ancient network of trails that generations of brown bears have carved into the tundra. It's late summer, and except for the constant wind, the landscape is relatively quiet. The masses of migratory waterfowl that come to Eisenbeck's coastal lagoons haven't arrived yet. But a little further inland, I found another migration heating up. Hundreds of thousands of salmon, chum, silver, pink, and sockeye, pouring into Eisenbeck's streams and rivers to spawn. And where there are salmon, there are bears. Lots of them. Bears of all ages congregate here to hunt for easy prey in the shallow riffles and pools. Critical time of the year for putting on fat before winter sets in. Mother bears with cubs in tow navigate around much larger and potentially dangerous adult males that are here too. But there is plenty of food when the fish arrive, and enough space for an abundance of bears and other wildlife to coexist and thrive. Eisenbeck lies at the end of the Alaska Peninsula. At 310,000 acres, it's the state's smallest wildlife refuge. But it protects a unique convergence of land and water that is extremely productive for wildlife. Rivers and streams descend from the highlands, providing habitat for spawning salmon that attract some of the highest densities of brown bears in Alaska. Two brackish coastal lagoons Eisenbeck and Kinzerov offer rich marine environments for a diversity of waterfowl, shorebirds, and marine mammals. In between the lagoons, a narrow, low-lying isthmus of tundra and wetlands serves as a vital corridor for the seasonal movements of bears, wolves, and caribou, and habitat where migratory birds nest and feed.
across Eisenbeck Lagoon on the ribbon of sandy barrier islands that separate it from the Bering Sea. I traveled to see some animals that have been arriving in recent years unexpectedly. Walrus. After days or weeks spent feeding at sea, walrus come ashore pale and exhausted to rest. As if dragging their 2,000 pound bodies onto land wasn't hard enough, they are met with the jabbing tusks and protests of rival males. At times, the entire mass is alive and jostling until bodies redistribute and the herd settles and sleeps. There have been signs in recent years that finding food and places to rest has become more difficult for walrus. Diminished sea ice and changing ocean conditions from a warming climate are a likely cause. Whatever the reason for them being here now, their undisturbed time resting ashore is critical to their survival. And they found refuge at Eisenbeck. Walrus may be relative newcomers to Eisenbeck, but there are species that have been coming here for centuries. Virtually the entire world population of Pacific Brant, around 200,000 individuals, arrives each fall. We've just come out to this lagoon and there are insane numbers of birds here. The hard part is like, um, just showing how many there are. There's so many here, but they're kind of dispersed. So you got these frames of hundreds of birds, but really there's hundreds, th hundreds of thousands. <laughs> Brant are hardy geese, adapted to marine environments. They come from breeding grounds in the Canadian Arctic, Alaska, and Russia to fatten up before making a direct flight to the Pacific coast of the US and Mexico for the winter. They're here for one reason, to feed on the vast meadows of nutrient-rich eelgrass that lie just below the surfaces of Eisenbeck and Kinseroff lagoons. Eelgrass fuels their long journey, and these beds are among the largest in the world. For Brandt, Eisenbeck is the linchpin of their annual migration. There is no other place like this on the planet. How do you find anything in this? Oh, there it is. Look at this. In my last days at Eisenbeck, I set out to look for the survey markers that mark a proposed road corridor through the wilderness and to imagine what that might look like. We've seen the maps and where the road is supposed to go, but we want to see the actual locations. A half a mile from the edge of Eisenbeck Lagoon, in the narrow isthmus of land at the heart of the refuge, I began to find them. There it is. 
right here. We've been in Eisenbeck now for six weeks and I'm sitting on top of a hilltop that really is at the heart of this refuge. Off to this side, you can see Cold Bay and Kinzeroff Lagoon and the Pacific. Off to this side, Eisenbeck Lagoon and the Bering Sea. And when it's clear, ahead of me and behind me, these great rims of volcanoes and glaciers. The proposed road would connect the villages of King Cove and Cold Bay. Winding approximately 20 miles across the refuge, it would bisect the isthmus. The plan calls for the removal of hilltops, the filling of wetlands, and gravel quarries to be excavated along the road's length. The U.S. Department of the Interior's assessment of the likely effects of the road include profound negative impacts on wildlife use of the isthmus. The road would damage wetlands and watersheds and introduce traffic, noise, and increased human activity, changing the refuge forever. It would be impossible to capture the essence of Eisenbeck in just six weeks. Hopefully this one blow away. But I feel fortunate for the time I had to try and to immerse myself in this place. It's orders of magnitude more spectacular when you see it in person. when you know that it exists. I came away from my time at Eisenbeck with the belief that its value doesn't exist solely in its birds, its bears, or the hundreds of thousands of salmon that reproduce in its streams. The value of Eisenbeck is in the place as a whole, as a complete and intact ecosystem from the depths of the surrounding seas to the peaks of its towering volcanoes. It provides food and refuge, but most of all, it provides space, undisturbed, a wilderness.